Hey guys, welcome back to Nature and Cosmos. Today we are going to talk about a shock tree. The first thing that you'll notice about this tree is that it stands at 12 meters. It's fairly tall and it is widely cultivated in India. Although the tree comes from the monsoon forest of Sri Lanka, it is usually cultivated in narrow conical form with short drooping branches. Its leaves are narrow, glossy, with wavy edges and which are quite distinctive. The flower and fruit are concealed with foliage and are seldom noticed. The tree scientific name is Polythia longifolia. It is from the custard apple family. The other names of the tree are Indian Must Tree, Indian Fir, Symmetry Tree, Ashok, Devdaru and Ashubal. The leaves are renewed in late March or early April. Another green flush in the veins. Now let's talk about leaves of this tree in detail. The leaves are slim, long with wavy edges and have extended pointed tip. It is glossy on both the sides. It is alternatively arranged with the distinctive wavy margins and a length of 28 cm. The tip of each leaf is long drawn out and gently tapering as you can see in this picture. The base is broadly V-shaped. If you touch the leaves, you'll notice that it is smooth on both surfaces, but slightly glossier above. If you look closely at the leaf, you'll notice that the midrib is prominent, but the side veins are very faint. Now let's look at the bark. The bark is grey-brown and it becomes darker, scabby and cracked with age. Let's look at the next part of the tree which is flowers. It, it is a star shape which is pale greenish yellow in color as seen in the photograph. It is formed in dense clusters along the plant plants. Each flower has a slender stalk of 2 cm long, a flower cup of 3 short triangular segments and 6 narrow pointy petals up to 2.5 cm long. It's hard to notice this flower because it is usually well hidden within the foliage. Let's look at the fruit now. The fruit is also formed in clusters of 8 and 20. Growing from the end of a common stalk, the entire cluster produced from a single flower. Each fruit is about the size of a small grape which is shiny and smooth. It is green at first and it turns deep purple as it ripens. Now let's look at the habitat of this tree. It is found scattered as an understory or main canopy tree in both evergreen and monsoon forest, sometimes along riverine systems. It is fairly drought hardy and quick growing tree. It makes a good city tree because it remains it remains nearly evergreen even in very dry conditions. Now let's look at the range of this tree. But as I told before, the tree is native to drier parts of Sri Lanka and to a few restricted localities in South India, where it is doubtfully found in the wild anymore. Widely cultivated throughout India and in Southeast Asia, especially the narrow conical form known as variety pendula. Now let's look at the uses of this tree. The ripening fruit is avidly eaten by flying foxes, birds and monkeys. Apparently it is safe for human consumption. The bark is used medicinally to treat fevers. The startingly white even grain wood is hollowed out to make drums in South India and for making pencils and small boxes. Hindus often employ the leaves in marriage ceremonies and to decorate gateways. Though the origins of this sanctified use are obscure, it is widely cultivated throughout India for ornament. If you like this video, then hit the like button and click subscribe for more videos. Thank you.